All right, guys, welcome to the channel. We're going to be solving question 44 from the sixth chapter of the Brian Johnson textbook. And uh, we need to determine the force in members FG and FH of the trust that we can see. And uh, since we are going for specific members in the trust, we can use the method of sections. And so since we are looking for member FG and FH, the sections that we're going to pick uh has to cross these two members so it makes sense to do our section in this way then if we go with the free body diagram of the right side of the truss we should be able to find all the unknowns that we have in here but before that let's figure out the forces that we have at two point supports at two supports that we have at point b and j so at b we have both x and y components since it's a pin and at j we only have a force in y component this will be our x and y in here if we use our equilibrium equations which are sum of all forces equals zero and sum of all moments equals zero we can find these unknowns that we have in here and as we can see the truss is not symmetrical uh, since we have a 12 kilonewton at point g which is missing at point c so we cannot assume that b y and j are the same because the loads in the truss are not symmetrical so let's start with some of all forces in x direction since the only force that we have in x direction is b x that force is zero so we can start doing uh our moment equation about either point B or J in order to find the two unknowns that we have in here. So if we do for J, we have the moment of the 12 kilonewton, which is going to be counterclockwise. So 12 times 2.4. We also have the moment of the other 12 kilonewton. This time the distance will be from here. So 2 times 2.4. We know which panel is 2.4. So it's going to give us 4.8. And we have the moment of by, which is a clockwise moment. So minus by times the distance from b to j, which is the distance of four panels, or 9.6. This will be equal to zero. So by in here would be 12. We can factor 12 in here, 4.8 plus 2.4. 7.2 divided by 9.6. So 12 times 7.2 divided by 9.6, that's going to give us 9 kilo no negative sign that shows that the direction was correct for Vy. Now we can do some of all forces in Y direction. So we have 9, which is our Vy plus J minus, we have 212, 2 times 12 kilo is equal to 0. Our J in here would be 24 minus 9, which will be 15 kN. Again, no negative sign in here that shows that our assumption at the beginning for the direction of BY and J was correct. So, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to do our section in this way, and we're going to draw the free body diagram of the right section of the truss. So, this part of the truss that we have these forces attached to and each of two if we continue with these we're going to get to point f so we have j in here if we get back we have i j h g i j h g so here we have the member the forcing member f h here would be the member in g f and this one would be the forcing member G. again i just assume this direction for now in each of these forces if we get a negative sign at the end that shows that the assumption was not correct we also have 112 kilonewton at g and we figure out that the force at j is 15 kilo from the previous system so we can do the same thing if we look at the y component we'll see that the only force in y component that has y component uh from the unknowns that we have is fge but in order to find the 
y component of fge we need some information about uh maybe this angle in here let's get back to the trust see how we can figure that one out so basically we're interested in this angle so i'm just going to show this triangle in here so one side is 2.4 the other side is 1.8 and we can do the Pythagorean theorem in order to find the hypotenuse but we can simplify these by just dividing each of these by 0 0.6 so this is going to give us 3 this is going to give us 4 and this is the famous combination that we have that's going to give us the hypotenuse of 5 so now it's easier to figure out that here we have 4, 3, and this will be 5. So we should be good to go to find the y component. The other way is to go with the angle in here. We can call it alpha and do the tangent inversive opposite over the adjacent or 1.8 over 2.4. Same answer. I just, uh, the reason I did that because I kind of saw these, these, com these combination 3, 4, 5 in here. If we divide 1.8 by 0 0.6, we'll get to that so it's easy and faster to find the hypotenuse. So now we can do the Fy in here. We have 15 minus, uh, as we can see, the Y component of FGF is downward. So we have a minus sign FGF times 3 over 5. That's going to give us the Y component minus 12 is equal to 0. So FGF or 3 over 5 times FGF would be 3, 15 minus 12, which is 3. You can cancel out 3. And FGF in here would be 5 kilonewton. We did not get any negative sign that shows the direction was correct. Let's just figure out if the member is intentional compression. So the member is in here. The force has to be in the opposite direction of that so the members in tension so the other force that we're interested in in here if we get back in so we found fg uh, or gf real doesn't matter is fh so we're not looking for feg actually so so we have two more equations we can do the fx which if we look at here we'll see that we have two unknowns for x so it makes sense to use the moment equation in here but the question is, which point should we find the moment about in order to find the F, FH? So if we do the moment about point G, we can cancel out the moment of FGF, FEG, which is one of the unknowns. So it seems that this is the easiest point that we can go in order to find the force in FH. So let's do that. We're going to find the moment of uh, some of all moments about point G. And as I mentioned, we have the moment of FFH. If we look at the moment, we'll see that the moment is clockwise. So negative times the distance is what we have in here, which is 1.8. And we also have the moment of the 15 kilonewton, which is going to make a counterclockwise moment plus 15 times the distance is what we have in here, which was 2.4 is equal to zero. And now we can find the F. FH in here, which will be 2.4 times 15 divided by 1.8. So we can cancel this out just like the previous step, dividing it by 0. 0.6 and 3, 15 can be canceled out by 3, 5. And this is going to give us 20 kilonewton or 4 times 5. And if we look at the forcing here at member FH, this will be the member, it has to be in the opposite direction. So this force is also in tension too. So yeah, that would be the final answer for this question. Hope all this made sense. Let me know if you guys have any questions. We are covering three different textbooks in this channel. Feel free to check out the playlist and let me know if you have any specific problem in your mind that you want me to cover it in the next videos. And you guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.